Peter cleared his throat and paused as he came between her path and the shore. The pale sun backed behind the clouds, snuffing out the shadows of his face, his black hair absorbing all the light, as black as anything around it, blacker. Stop staring, she told herself, and smiled, bright, but he did not return it, and kept instead a steady gaze that said he had seen her hunger. She dropped her eyes to the tangled bull kelp at her feet, their slimy fronds twisted around a net at the rack line, where breakers made their final sally before retreating, restless. A cloud of black flies floated around her ankles, her tennis shoes squished into a nest of smaller sea plants. Claudia stepped past the records of the last high tide and onto the smooth, flat sand, and they kept on, not talking, their footprints erasing themselves with damp exhales from beneath, the closest she'd get to leave no trace or walking on water. The sea stood up and toppled over, dragging kelp and sand into itself before rising again and again, reaching for the shore. Its passage left a thick sheen on the crust of crushed shells, which rolled on their sides and sighed, sated. Their shoulders brushed once and again as they walked, footsteps moving toward and away from each other in subtle waves that stretched long with the languid tempo of dune ridges. Ruddy cliffs held back a cedar forest that spilled over, curving toward the sky atop a dark headland, tide pools bared to the sky. She kept her focus on that outcropping, trying not to watch Peter from the corners of her eyes as they drew nearer. His shadow at her periphery had taken over her full attention. Grazing his hand, her entire body aligned to him like filings on a magnet. She looked without looking, hearing his weight change on the beach. Claudia was relieved when they came to the headland's surf-addled rock. Where air had been, life crept in, a profusion of glossy mussels and rough barnacles, orange and purple sea stars, lime and crimson anemones, and emerald plants she could not name. Claudia crouched before the first pool, its stillness a pane of glass onto a world that did and did not pertain to her. A velvety red anemone swayed, stirred by some unseen force. She pushed a finger into its cold home, slow and careful. The anemone tuned to her, its rubbery receptors waving in her direction, beckoning. They clung to her as she slipped her nail into the folds of its body, trying to be gentle. It held her, and she lingered, feeling how dear it was, this aggressive embrace, and how it was this creature's weakness, and not the ferocity of its intent, nor the cunning of its perception which made it dear. Her power inspired a rising tenderness. Claudia tickled but poked no further, inclining her head so a sky mirror drew over the pool and she could regard herself being maternal. Beside her shifting face, she saw Peter. His eyes were on her. The air thickened into mist, blurring their reflection. Come again tomorrow, he said, and left her there. <laughs>